Hey, Dan, we're getting ready to land. You know, airplanes arrive from several different directions, and the Air Traffic Control Center has to merge all those planes into a single file line, making sure there's a safe distance between each plane. Right. And since air traffic can sometimes arrive like rush hour traffic on a highway, pilots may have to adjust their flight plans, change their speed or altitude, or go into a holding pattern. Some of these adjustments may cause delays. However, safety comes first. That's right. When we were about 6 to 18 kilometers from the airport, the Air Traffic Control Center hands us off to the San Francisco Airport Control Tower. Tower controllers there relay current weather and air traffic information to our pilot. Wow, what a ride. Hey, there's the control tower. I wonder what they're doing in there. Well, let me tell you. Now that we've landed, controllers in the tower tell our pilot which taxiways to use and where we can park. You know, we're not completely safe until we've parked at the gate and our pilot has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. San Francisco, here, here we come. come. safety program is helping pilots maintain high levels of safety in our skies, NASA is also working to help airports operate more safely and efficiently. As airplane traffic increases in our skies, the possibility for more accidents or incidents also increases on the ground. Right. Pilots have flight simulators to simulate conditions in the air. But what about people in control towers who monitor and direct takeoffs and landings? Yeah, I mean, could all the people that guide airplanes to the ground, like pilots, air traffic controllers and airport operators work together and try out new ways to safely move planes around an airport? NASA believed they could, so a unique facility was built right here in California to help solve present and future problems of our nation's airports. It's called NASA Future Flight Center. And to learn more, we came here to NASA Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California. Oh. Why was NASA Future Flight Central built? How does NASA use technology to simulate airports? Analyzing the graph, what factors do you think influence the air traffic controller's responses? NASA Future Flight Central is a two-story facility with a 360-degree view. It's capable of doing a full-scale, real-time simulation of an airport. It's where air traffic controllers, pilots, and airport personnel can interact with each other and test out new technologies. As you can see, this is designed to look very much like a real air traffic control tower. The downstairs rooms support the simulation. We bring in real air traffic controllers. They wear headsets and communicate with the pilots, giving them permission to taxi, take off, and land. At the same time, they also scan the runways and taxiways to make sure that all the airplanes are maintaining a safe distance from each other, just as you do while driving an automobile. How do you make this tower and these planes look so real? With a supercomputer. We create a virtual airport environment, which means it is made to look very realistic when compared to an actual airport. We do this by using satellite imagery, aerial surveys, and digital photography. Simulation software allows us to move 200 vehicles, like airplanes or ground trucks, all at the same time and at realistic speeds. We can simulate a variety of weather conditions, like dense fog, rain, or snow. We can also place numerous planes on the runway that need to move all at once, making the test as realistic as possible. For example, an airplane can be placed where it shouldn't be, and the air traffic controllers have to try to safely get the plane out of the way to avoid a collision. Nancy, that is so cool. Sounds like NASA Future Flight Central simulates many of the conditions that happen at our nation's airports. That's right. Not only at our facility can we duplicate a real airport and operate it as it runs today, but we can also make changes and see if we can make things safer. For example, we conducted a study of San Francisco International Airport. Currently, the airport is conducting an environmental review to assess the possibility of building new runways. Because of space limitations, these new runways would be built out into San Francisco Bay. This could possibly cause the airport to relocate its control tower. Using our facility, 
We simulated the San Francisco airport and built the new runways. Then, for each proposed location of the tower, we moved some planes down the runway and watched the view. Without Future Flight Central, the airport might move its tower to a location with blocked views and wouldn't be able to operate the airport safely. Has NASA used this facility to simulate any other airports? We sure have. Recently, NASA did a study of the Los Angeles International Airport, or in airport terms, LAX. Our goal was to simulate a realistic operating environment that was as close as possible to what the LAX air traffic controllers experience every day in the tower. This study was different from the one on the San Francisco airport because before we could simulate any changes to LAX, we had to first make sure that we could realistically simulate one of the busiest airports in the world. So how did you determine if the simulation was as realistic as the real LAX? Just like you do in math class, Dan. First, we collected data from the air traffic controllers using questionnaires. Using the data, we created an interpreted graph to determine if we accomplished our goal. There were many factors involved in determining whether our simulation was realistic. Let me show you one of the graphs we created. The title of the graph is Realism Ratings for LAX Air Traffic Controllers. This graph tells us how the real LAX controllers rated our simulation. Okay, let's see. Along the bottom are ratings from 1 to 5, with 1 being not at all realistic and 5 being identical to LAX. Nancy, what is a ground air traffic controller and a local air traffic controller? A ground controller is responsible for airplanes on the ground, leaving the gate and taxiing to the runway, for example. A local controller issues takeoffs and landings, maintains a safe distance between arriving and departing aircraft, and is responsible for controlling flights up to 16 kilometers from the tower. Let's put the data on the graph. As you can see from the data we collected, both the ground and local controllers believe that our simulation of airplanes on the ground and in the sky met our goal of being realistic compared to LAX. In fact, the data shows that we exceeded our goal and we were very realistic compared to LAX. Just as John collects data to help train pilots for safety, Future Flight Central will realistically simulate our nation's airports so they can continue to run smoothly and safely. Nancy, that's amazing that NASA realistically simulated one of the world's busiest airports. So what's next? The next step will be to determine what will and what will not work when proposed changes are made to the LAX operating environment. Because Future Flight Central is a safe place to try out new airport procedures, both time and money will be saved as LAX continues to put safety first. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, so far on today's show, Dan and I have flown from Virginia all the way to California. And during this flight, we learned how NASA's wind tunnel tests are helping train pilots to be even safer. We also learned how airplanes and passengers get from gate to gate, and how NASA uses simulations to make airports safer. So, do you have what it takes to be an air traffic controller? See if you can safely and efficiently land airplanes at Norbert International Airport.